Hi guys, so today I just wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind. The topic is about faith and character. Like, does your faith influence your character? And I, by faith, let me change the word faith and say, let me use belief. Does what you believe in really influence your character? And my, this is my perspective because uh, I used to catch feelings when people used to attack like my faith because of something that's based on my character. Because for me, like God, like how people see God is really important to me. And I wouldn't want to defame you can't really defame God, but you know what I'm trying to mean. Like, I never want to be the person who causes someone else to think of God in a lesser, like, in that God is a lesser being. So, without, with that said, I've realized that most of the times I used to catch feelings when people used to attack my faith based on my character or... If not based on my character, based on just, you know, me being who I am. And I came to realize, you know, I had this thought. I've been thinking about this, like, since, I don't know, let's just say it's a, an accumulative idea. That faith and character are very two different things. Character does not influence what you believe in, but what you believe in does influence your character. Let's say, like... Um, a lot of people who are in, like, if you're a Christian or whatever religion you're from, we usually judge the people who lead us by character, assuming that their character is, you know, which is right, of course, assuming that their character is based on what they believe in. So if they speak about a God they believe in and what we know about the God they believe in doesn't align with what they are doing. We judge them based on that. But we forget that uh, this there's this space where people grow, you know, whether they believe in something or not. Like, for example, I'm going to use myself because I know me better than anyone, you know, which is debatable according to most people but you know it is what it is so here's the thing for me I have come to realize that um, my beliefs have molded my um, character a lot of my perceptions a lot of what I do is based on what I believe but from someone uh, who is outside looking in they might judge it as uh, Let's say like if I do an aggressive thing and talk about God in the next sentence or do an aggressive thing while I talk about God, people are like, huh? But when I look at my what I believe in, I look at God like an, an authority, someone who stands up for people, someone who stands up for what they believe in, you know? So when, um, based on what I believe, my reaction automatically translate to, uh, translates according to what I believe in. I don't know if this is understandable, but listen, I hope this makes sense in the end. So, uh, the main reason why I'm talking about this is because I realized that I shifted from catching feelings when people talk about my faith due to my character. Because if, let's say, um, I stand up, I stand up like, let's say what, like if someone speaks to me in a certain tone, let's use this example, and it's a tone that doesn't sit well with me, even being a Christian, I will automatically react against that tone based on what I believe, because I don't believe like in people talking down on anyone so my reaction comes from what i believe in also um and also i've realized uh the thing about belief if you want to change anyone's character if anyone is to change their character you have to 
speak to what they believe in. And it's what politicians do, it's what uh, slanderers and gossipers do, it's what, you know, we do, you know, whether based on faith or based on experience or backgrounds or on the vision we have of the future. We usually speak to the belief. Then the belief translates to the character. Because there is no way you can change anyone's character without speaking to their belief. When you shift what they believe in, you shift how they react to things and how they behave. And to prove this, try doing... No, don't try this because it's not a really nice thing to do. I saw... I'm going to use this uh, kids uh, example. Like if you find young kids, and I mean kids who can't um, speak a full sentence like correctly but you can understand what they speak try finding kids who are in a queue you know and if they're supposed to get like let's say um what let me use something that i've seen kids going to fetch water they've queued up everyone knows who's after who this is a queue of just kids kids who can't mold a sentence fully like properly and as an adult, keep going, uh, instead of queuing up behind them, keep going um, directly to the top. Go take, like, let's say you're filling up a jerry can, pick the jerry can, fill it up, go back. Come back, skip the queue, go to the top, fetch water, go back. The kids get so agitated. And I realized these kids don't even know they don't understand the concept of right or wrong. So when they react, it's based on what they believe in. They look at it and they feel this isn't, this isn't a good thing. This isn't right for anyone to do, whether it's a young person or an adult. And their, their reaction will be some will cry, some will complain, some will scream, some will get so frustrated that they will walk away from the situation. And looking at that uh, perspective a lot of uh, we forget that as adults we're just you know Michael Todd said it best adults are just kids who are grown up meaning that the concept of belief is still the same and most of the time we struggle with things because we are trying to change the character instead of way most of the time we are trying to change the character instead of trying to change what we believe in. Like if you believe that, um, what is it? If you believe that choosing a certain leader will change the way things are run in the government, you, you, your belief has to work with your character. So if you believe a certain, like let's say leader A is the best for the people, when the time comes to vote, to vote, don't go and vote for leader B because you have hope that leader B will change. Based, you don't know the beliefs of this person. You don't know what they believe in. So, for you to assume that this person will change in the amount of time set for him or her to lead, is just an assumption. And you don't want to do. You don't want to rely on assumption because assumptions are wrong. So. Why don't you, if you believe leader A is the best for the people, take your vote, let your belief and your character align. You know, your, let your belief drive you to choosing leader A. Also, if you live in an environment where you feel like you're not, that's not the place set for you, that's not the place God has called for you, why do you stop like, why do you, um, what is it called, align with people who think like people who are going to get stuck in those situations for the rest of their life. If you're a speaker and um, you get uncomfortable with people listening in, you should start aligning your belief with your character. And that means like if you believe that what you speak changes people, then you shouldn't you should um, keep it in mind that anything you say at whatever time, whether you're at home, whether you're in a church, in a bus, it changes people. So that means hold your words to your values. It means hold your character to your values. 
and not based on people because people everyone has their own perception of what they think is right and what they think is wrong and most of the time uh, people get go wrong because they expect claps for the things for what they they believe in is right and here's the truth wisdom will never get the most will never get majority votes that's a fact I'll repeat it again. Wisdom will never, ever in life get majority uh, votes or clubs. And if you look at the life based on Jesus, Jesus was a perfect fellow, you know. He did things right. He believed in a God. He tried to help people. But these people preferred a murderer to be released instead of Jesus, the, the good guy, you know. And... I think people judge uh, whether they're doing right based on what people clap for, which is so wrong. I think every one of us, if we measured ourselves according to what we believe, and I'm saying what we believe because we don't all believe in the same God, which again is debatable because the people believe we all worship the same God. Personally, I don't believe we worship the same God. There are people who worship, who worship themselves, there are people who worship material things, there are people who worship idols, there are people who worship the applause of people. So for me, I believe in one God, Jesus Christ. So based on that, everything I do is based on my belief of Jesus Christ. And that will mean that sometimes I will step on people's toes, not because I'm wrong, but because of what I believe in and what I've gathered from my faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm using faith, you know, when I use faith, please understand I'm using belief. So this means that if you believe you're a leader, a leader to me means a servant. If you're a leader, everything you do is supposed to translate in the aspect of a servant. Meaning that you're supposed to be like uh, the kind of person who has a thick skin. You're supposed to have beliefs that are so firmly founded that no one can shake it. This means that uh, also if you're a leader, you're supposed to be open enough to listen to people, listen to people's perspective, but also closed up enough to not change what you believe in wh when it's true based on what people think or say or do. Your character, your belief is supposed to be uh, like a branding. You know, like how people have brands and whatever commodity they change, whatever product they sell. If let's say they started off with their brand selling clothes and they change off their brand, when their brand is like popular, uh, they change off their, their product they are selling, let's say from clothes to water. The translation of their brand shifts to the water. It doesn't change, what is it called, the foundation of what they created. So uh, my main point is I feel like there are a lot of people in this life who are great. There are people who are confined in their environments. They are confined in the things they were taught, knowing in their hearts and in their spirits that that is in the right thing. You know, and I mean like foundations like families, I mean neighborhoods, I mean environments, countries. You're confined in the things people say and your greatness never comes out because you, you're waiting like for people to applaud you, which is wrong. I think you should break off. You should get ready to be like be the foe of everyone by foe i mean be the enemy to everyone and don't be the enemy like don't go around killing people because they don't believe in what you believe in i simply mean have the courage the confidence to follow what you believe in whether people clap for it or not and also have the wisdom to be able to learn from people you don't necessarily consider wise or people you don't relate with in terms of faith uh for me personally, I've learned like forgiveness. I've learned from both this. I've learned um, the concept of thinking from an atheist. I've learned the belief of God from someone I met in a club. I've learned um, fatherhood from a church. So I think be open enough to learn, but don't be so open enough to change 
the concepts of what you believe is true for people. So, and if you're out there and you feel like um, you need help in a certain area, look at people you want to emulate. You can't go looking for greatness to, to from people. I mean, you can't go looking for greatness from people you don't consider great. It's like... <laughs> I don't want to use this specific word, but there are people who go for cults, looking for cults from cults uh, for help, and these people can't even help themselves. You go looking for wealth from people who don't even know how to gain wealth. You go looking for wisdom from people who don't even act like they are wise. You know, you go looking for um, privacy from people who don't know how to keep secrets. Like where you find where you go to look for mentorship you have to look at if what they again what they believe in translates to their character because you can't always believe in what people say you have to look at it from the perspective of what people do and there's this scripture i don't know where it is in the bible that says where god says that the people of the world are wiser than than his own people and if you really think about that word, it will make you shift uh, your perspective about how you see people, how you listen to people. Because, um, and also this other scripture about how God frustrates the minds of the wise. So don't always expect wise things from wise people. Don't always expect, um, let's say what, like most people don't listen to the wisdom when it comes from a poor person. Why? Because they judge wisdom from a perspective of wealth which is not true wisdom and wealth have the same power but it's not the same thing it doesn't translate to the same thing wealth can wealth does not have power to change character but wisdom has the power to change character and gain wealth you i hope you get my drift so be open enough to listen to people sometimes even your own enemy can say something that is wise Someone stupid can have a moment of saying something that is wise. And if you're a wise person, you're supposed to walk life with the understanding that you don't know everything. And be open to changing things that are changeable. Like, um, don't hold firm to things that if you change your environment, it changes your perspective. Change the things that, you know, change your main... Um, I don't know. Change your main source of wh where you get things from. Because, um, let's say like this thing where um, you will go in an African country, people praise, this is an example I'm giving, so follow me. If you go to an African country, I'm not saying all African countries, but I'm saying most parts of African countries, they really praise... Um, a certain body type like if you're caviar if you're plump then when you go to western countries you realize that they worship skinnier yeah? i don't know if it's changed but from exper from my experience the people have um related with from those different perspectives and this doesn't mean that there aren't africans who think slim is pretty or there aren't Western people who think caviar is pretty. But I'm just saying that there are places where they praise a certain body type because that's how they've been brought up to believe the foundations of beauty are. So, um, if again, my point, if you're a wise person, it's... N it's wisdom for you to challenge those beliefs. It's wisdom for you to look at the things that change when you change environments and really think into it. But the thing you don't change about your beliefs is things like the root of what you believe in. If you believe like um, in one God, like let's say me, I believe in Jesus Christ. Anything... Like, I cannot go and worship something that isn't Jesus Christ. So what I change is the branch of what I believe in. So this is things like what I believe about family. If it's not based on Jesus Christ, I don't follow it. Um, things about uh, even churches. 
if the church doesn't preach about something I've seen in Jesus Christ, I don't believe it. When it comes to my environment, if it doesn't align with what I've read from Jesus Christ, I don't follow it. So, meaning my source is the same, but the branches, the branches consistently change, and which is a good thing. Constant change for any human being is a good thing because it means you're growing. But if you're stuck, if you're stuck in being the same person week to week, like, come on now, change. You need to change. You need to pursue change like your life depends on it. Don't be stuck. You'd rather, like, this is what I always say, I'd rather be the type of person who sits alone and changes by myself than be the type of person who hangs out uh, in crowds and gets stuck in being the same person. You wake up and you don't find your beliefs being challenged. There are no questions um, placed in you to ask. And also another thing, because this is just a random thought, um, the thing where we like as people we've become so comfortable with not asking questions until we don't ask questions in our places of faith when our leaders do the wrong thing like it these days it's like um like let's say if a if a preacher rapes a kid no one questions it because oh doom is unto us if we question that person and if you look at what they believe in, it really says God doesn't stand for things like that. But people don't question because people don't question themselves. They don't question if what they believe in is the right thing. So I feel like um, the greatest challenge in life is to always question yourself. Jesus was a perfect. You know, if you read the word of God, it says Jesus was the perfect man. He still is. But... Jesus, when Jesus was in a form of a man, he always, uh, he was always questioned, and he always answered questions based on the people who really, who are really curious to learn. He never answered questions from people who just asked questions to prove a point. So another point: don't ask questions to prove a point. You know, and. If you look at this situation, like let's say there are religious, religious people who go out in the streets, not a specific, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know how to, to say it, but there are people who go around the world and in the streets speaking about how their God is the right one, but at the same time they are backlashing the gods other people believe in like and it's like if much effort for you to backlash other people's gods why don't you tell me why your god is good then give me the choice the will to to um choose for myself again based on what i believe the god i believe in gives people the willpower to choose meaning everyone has the right to choose what they should or shouldn't believe in so yeah so that's what i was thinking about so personally i like to listen to people even when i don't like people because i always learn something either about myself or about people like um another recent thing i learned was um the thing about getting offended with consistent consistently about what people speak about you you get so offended you lose the lesson and now because you know if you do follow me you've seen um the thing i wrote about uh you know i'll link it below and it came from a perspective of change i asked myself why why does this bother me and why do i you know follow the same pattern the same formulas of solving this same problem and there's this quote that goes around that madness is doing the same thing, hoping for uh, a different result. So I decided to change my pattern, my formula of handling it. So now I take I take it like in that situation. I took it and used it in one of um, again. I link the I link it below in the description box. 
So you use it as motivation. Use what people say as motivation. Um, be open to wisdom wherever it comes from. Choose, um, let your faith, um, your beliefs align with your character. Don't just do it for people. Don't just do it because people approve. Because people approve for the craziest things. People approve, you know, like if you look at our times, people used to, um, it used to be an abomination for people to sleep around. Now people applaud it. So if you base your foundations on people, you're going to get lost. You're going to be confused about what you believe in. Base your um, belief system, your source on something that doesn't change, you know, whatever season it is. And, you know, if you really think about it, there is a reason why we're placed in this world by a God who can do anything, but he doesn't do everything for us. Like, for example, like, um, this God who can do anything, he doesn't uh, keep us from, he doesn't keep everyone from floods. What if it's a test? What if God is testing us to see if we're aligning to the compassion he's Speaks to us about what if you know the leaders we have who don't align with the things we believe in what if it's a test to check if we're if uh, uh, the power we always speak about is the power we translate to how we choose our leaders um, let's say what else in our environments we speak about greatness what if your um, God is testing you to see if your character aligns with what you believe in. If you believe you're supposed to be in greatness and you hang around people who don't um, translate that belief, you know, like, <laughs> question yourself. Ask yourself questions, you know. God was questioned. If, and if God was questioned, maybe it's time we all questioned ourselves. Question what you believe in. Question who you hang around, question um, why you do the things you do, why you're passionate or aggressive about some stuff, why things bother you. You know, ask yourself questions and find the answers in who or what you believe in. Otherwise, you will be the same person from the beginning of your life to the end of your life. You don't want to die like as a person who used to follow the crowd. You don't want to die as the person who never made a difference in your life. You know, you can have all the material stuff, but if you don't change what you believe in, trust me, you'll be at the end of your life wondering what you lived for. Like, that's just an empty life. I don't know if everyone cares about, you know, I don't want to assume everyone cares about the things I care about, but I feel like it's important for us to find something that's worth dying for. Like, if today was your last day, you will look back at it and think, wow, I just, like, I lived my best life. I lived for things that really matter to me, not things that matter to us, because us is really relative. Us changes all the time. So let's live according to that, because all these material things, and also considering it's a time where everything is uncertain during this, like, uh, corona times everything is uncertain and the things that are going on if you're if you're not alert you'll miss a lot of things in life because we are living in a time where it's not age doesn't determine how long you live age doesn't dis determine how experienced or how wise you are we are living in a time where Kids are the smartest people. You can, like, sit with a kid and you're like, wow. Like, these kids these days, they have so much wisdom, so much knowledge. They have so much understanding and compassion. And you look at people who are supposed to have all these things and they don't. So it's like, a, it's like, I don't like living by the principle of life is short. Life is short, but I feel like there is an urgency of people looking deeper than just the physical stuff. Like we're living in a time where it's about you, yourself, checking yourself, not about people checking you, and not about a status quo. Status quos don't matter. 
if today is the, is your is the end of your life like the status quo doesn't come with you so if you don't check yourself like it's just a sorry life don't live a sorry life you'd you'd rather have a sorry ending but not a sorry life like don't miss out on the things that matter the most the things that go beyond your existence you're supposed to live that things that matter even in your absence you know so yeah so question the things you believe in question why you don't do certain things that you feel you're called to do and maybe this life you know our society maybe has hope maybe there's a way to end corruption you know instead of blaming the government for the things we are all involved in you know and you know change your environment in how you are in basing your character on your beliefs not on what people say or what people think about you you know kill that perception you don't need that reputation you just need your belief your firm foundations anyway if um you'd like more of this you know what to do and thank you for your presence thank you for your time and never forget that to change people's beliefs you have to be hard sometimes you're hard through what you do sometimes you're hard through what you say sometimes you're hard in you know voicing whatever it is you believe in in whatever form it is whether it's material or spiritual or whatever it is and you know kill the fears do what you're afraid of and i don't mean go killing people again because these days you have to clarify everything don't go around um killing people emotionally physically spiritually like be the builder of people let everything you speak come from a place of belief not from a place of applause don't be the person who is led by applause people will never help if you just carried away by applause they will praise you today like um the story of um paul one minute he was called uh, the devil the next one after a snake bit him and he didn't die people called him a god so base your foundations on things that don't change that things that perceptions can't change you know i hope you hear what i'm saying and if you're afraid of doing something that you feel you're called to like you need to wake up <laughs> you need to wake up and do what you have to do whether it's in smallness or in greatness whether it's in fear sometimes you have to do things when you're afraid of doing it you know the best type of growth is when you see yourself rising from a place where you did not believe in what you are doing not in what you're doing because obviously you have to believe in what you're doing the best you know the best kinds of greatness is where you watch someone grow from nothing to greatness you know so be that type of person let your not your situation of nothingness be a challenge to greatness you know and don't stop doing things because of people like you'd rather stop doing something because of what you believe in than what people think or you know false perceptions okay so thank you for your time and your presence like share subscribe